Now, not long ago, I made a video about using a red filter when shooting black and white film. Well, I'm back for another test, and this time we are talking about the orange filter. If you haven't watched that video about the red filter, I highly encourage that you do so, but fear not, we are gonna cover all the same basic fundamentals in this video. But after this one, go ahead and check that one out because what we're gonna discover is that color filters when shooting black and white film are going to provide their own unique characteristics. For this test, I used my trusty Bronica SQAI. I shot a roll of Kentmare Pan 400 and Kodak Tri-X 400, more on that later. But before I get too ahead of myself, what's the deal with colored filters anyway? And why do people use them in the first place? Well, first we need to understand that black and white film stocks like Kentmare Pan 400 and Kodak Tri-X are panchromatic, meaning they register every color of the visible light spectrum and then convert them to black and white in various tones. To use black and white filters well, you should have an understanding of complementary colors. Simply put, a colored filter will let its own color pass through with ease and will block its complement. The colors that they let pass through will render as brighter in the image or as a lighter shade of gray. For this test, just like my last one, I took two photos of each composition, one without the filter and then one with the filter. Every photo was taken on a tripod to ensure that the frames matched up and they were taken seconds apart to ensure that the lighting stayed consistent. Now, something to consider when using a colored filter is that they cut out a good deal of light. You're basically just putting a semi-dark piece of glass in front of your lens, so your exposure after the fact is going to be different. Depending on where you look online, folks say that an orange filter will cut 1.5 stops to two stops of light. So I went ahead and adjusted my settings two stops for this test. That means that after taking a meter reading of your scene without any filter applied, you're gonna wanna add two stops of light, either by opening your aperture two stops or by slowing down your shutter speed. For this test, I kept a log of all my camera settings so we could really see this in action. Also, these images that you're going to be seeing are only minorly edited by me. I just wanna show off the true power of the orange filter without too much meddling. And without further ado, let's get to it. I loaded up my Kentmare Pan 400 and headed out to see what I could find. The first photo I took was of this mural of a frog that's near my apartment. We're looking at F16 at 250, uh, one over 250 for our normal exposure. And then after we take that, we're going to add the orange filter and take the photo uh, two stops over. So we're going to open to an F8. Uh, and let's see how it goes. And three, two, one. Very nice. Now, all right, so now what we're gonna do is add on the orange filter. And there it is. So the differences here are a little subtle, but we can see that just under the frog's mouth is where there's a good deal of orange paint. And when we add the filter, that appears lighter. Not only that, but take a look at what happened to the area surrounding the frog. It actually got darker. And as a reminder, the reason for that is that blue is the complementary color to orange. And so it's gonna have a harder time passing through the filter and onto our film. I should have brought my sunglasses. It is so bright outside. All right, so we're looking at this mop head that's stuck in this uh, traffic cone. I'm gonna take a photo of it. My meter reading is telling me F11 at 125th, 1 125th, which means we're gonna open up to 5.6 once we add the filter on. Now we're gonna add the filter. There it goes. And voila. Here we've got another clear example in the orange traffic cone becoming a lighter shade of gray. We could also see that it's reducing the contrast quite a bit as well. The mop head is smoother and less detailed than in the no filter version. I took another photo while on this little walk of mine, but frankly, it doesn't deserve much discussion, but I'll show you anyway. It's a random photo of a soccer ball in the grass, and there isn't much of a difference, so uh, whatever. I'm throwing it up here for you to see, but my commentary is limited. 
I made it back home and I saw my cat Kirby sleeping in her little cat bed. I'm gonna try to get a photo of her with the orange filter. We'll see how that goes. All right, so we're doing this one at F8 at one over 30 and hopefully she doesn't move. I took the first photo without the filter. And then I added the filter on. We're gonna open up to an F4. And then, tragedy struck. Well, shit. It seems I can't make these color filter videos without something going wrong along the way. But you know what, whatever, I'm gonna let it slide off the back. It's one frame out of the bunch. It's not a big deal, it's not like What's that? Oh, it happened to the rest of the roll. Oh. So those portraits of my two friends that I took, those are also, yeah, understood, understood. Yeah, so not sure what happened here, but the rest of the roll turned out super underexposed to the point of having no exposure whatsoever. It was either that the camera malfunctioned or, no, I mean, that it's that, that has to be it, right? I mean, you could see in the video that I opened up the iris after applying the filter and changed nothing else. So there's no reason it should have come out blank. And then of course, because this is how it always goes, I couldn't recreate the results later on. So I still have no idea what happened with this roll. It's one of life's great mysteries. So I went to my local lab and picked up a roll of Kodak Tri-X so as to keep the same ISO. And I shot some self portraits here in my studio. And luckily, no malfunctioning camera this time. So let's quickly rattle off some of these and point out the differences that we see. As we've seen across the board, anything orange within the frame is going to change to a lighter shade of gray. So we could see the pattern on my sweater here, the orange teddy bear, the orange fish cat toy that I was attempting to swallow whole. You could also see how it affects these orange glasses that I was wearing. But also important to note here is that it does something cool to the textures of my face. In portrait photography, an orange filter is going to reduce the appearance of freckles or blemishes, smoothing skin for a healthy, smooth overall look. But important to note that this isn't a universal truth. There are many different shades of skin tones out there and some skin tones may have different results. Since my Caucasian skin has a fair amount of orange pigment, the orange lightens in the image and smooths it out a little bit. So one thing in this test that I didn't do, which should be noted, is that I didn't take any photos with the sky prominently featured in them. It's said online that the orange filter when photographing a bright blue sky can darken it pretty significantly. So make sure you keep that in mind anytime you're doing any sort of outdoor compositions. And frankly, that about covers it. I've heard the orange filter referred to as the general purpose filter. The results that you get out of the orange filter won't be as prominent as the red filter, but they will be a little bit more intense than the yellow filter, which I will be covering next time. I could see myself using the orange filter in the future, especially when it comes to portrait photography, because I oftentimes really want that smooth, healthy skin look. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I really hope you found it useful. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell to be notified when new videos are released. You could become a member by hitting that join button for a couple bucks a month. You can help this channel grow into the future. You could also help support me by heading to my print shop, consider buying a print. Go ahead and find me on Instagram and feel free to DM me, send me any photos of that you've taken with the orange filter or with any colored filter for that matter. I wanna see all the work that you guys are producing. And with that, I will see you all next time.